Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Metal State's League of Legends Challenger Series Season 4 Grand Final. I'm tuned in here with Sheepy today. Sheepy, how are you doing this fine Saturday afternoon? I'm good. I mean, I was kind of getting hyped by that intro video, I'm not going to lie. It was uh, a refreshing a moment. I'm like, who's that voice? Is that? I recognize that sound, but it's good to be back, <laughs> and it should it's, be uh, good. It's always a good blast from the past uh, to uh, see the, the history you've been through in this game and uh, to know that there's going to be some exciting more action coming today. Uh, just, to, just to speak on uh, the history now, we've uh, had an exciting three weeks of uh, groups and playoffs that's taken place. Teams have battled it out, but at the end of the day, Sheepy, there can only be two. And uh, those two today is ATK taking on Noble Esports' five lonely men. What do you think about this series, just hearing this initial um, introduction? How do you think uh, these two names go facing up against each other? So, I mean, ATK has always been a team to get to the finals. They're kind of like the big dog in the local scene, so they're the team to be dethroned. As for the other side, we have now not Royalty, but Nibble stepping up after last night's defeat. It went to the third game of the Best of Three series, for those of you who missed it. And, I mean, you were kind of watching, I saw you put in the chat towards the end. Did you think Nibble had that? Like, that, that semi-finals win? Well, I mean, uh, before we before I, I, we get into that, I want to take a bit of a, a back seat and uh, just look at where they came from to get to that moment that you spoke about yesterday. So uh, we had Nibble come into the playoffs bracket as the fifth seed where ATK came in as first. ATK, quick recap, they made it through the winner's bracket quite swiftly, uh, dropping one map throughout the entire run into error last time, and they secured a swift 2-0 victory against Royalty, securing their spot in the grand final. Uh, five Lonely Men, though, completely different. They came in as the fifth seed, the bottom of the log, or just one away from the bottom of the log. They had a long fight ahead of them. Uh, they started their first game out against Extreme Vision Gaming. They were able to secure that game as a 2-0 victory. They then moved on to take on Era Genesis. That as well, a 2-0 victory. Then they were met with a team that were able to take a map off ATK, and they finished with the same result as ATK, finishing with a 2-1 victory. Very close series. And then last but not least, as you mentioned, now she be royalty in the loser bracket final. Uh, they played them last night. The game went on from about 9 p.m. all the way till about half past 11. And five lonely men were able to pick up that 2-0 victory into royalty. And if I can say so myself, looking extremely strong going into that match. That is ATK or Nibble that's looking strong? Nibble, Nibble looking strong into that match against royalty. Okay. I mean, speaking of being strong and all, so we kind of have an interesting situation where the roster of five lonely men is kind of a bit stacked. Like, they've got Kiddo, even though some players may not recognize his new account name, which is, uh, do you remember off the top of your head? It's something very bizarre combination of Luke, words. It's, it's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's Luke Jin of four shots. Maybe. So it's a play on the, the champion in League of Legends, Jin, because he's known he can only shoot uh, four shots at a time before he has to reload. Uh, so I think it's a, it's just a play on that champion. Okay, so I mean, again, it's like, Kiddo's always been that player that tends to almost get like a a joke in the SEC scene where whatever team Kiddo plays for kind of wins by default. So let's see whether that curse plays through today or not, seeing as he is actually playing for the side of Nibble opposed to ATK, which is kind of interesting because he has played for ATK in the past, so he's versing some old friends. Let's go with that. You think that changes anything? Thanks. Like, how does that how does that affect the series? Look, I, I remember in one of the seasons, Kiddo did play, and I, it might have not been, it definitely wasn't the Metal State Challenger Series, but in the weekly cups, they've taken on uh, when Kiddo was still playing for ATK, and Kiddo's uh, played on that roster. They've taken on teams like Plague Dawn, and Plague Dawn has been able to secure those victories even into Kiddo. So it does show that Kiddo is beatable, and that uh, don't just take it for granted if you got Kiddo that you're going to win. Uh, I think that, uh, speaking of the rosters looking stacked, um, if we just look at the players on the side of ATK, uh, we've got Jet Lust into Pentademon in the top lane. Now, uh, two pretty much tank bruiser fighter orientated orientated players. What do you what do you think about that kind of matchup in the the top lane? I want to I want to work our way through different lanes on just uh, discussing the players. So I mean, Penta in himself is kind of an interesting one. He tends to be much more of a tank player, he kind of does what the team needs him to do. So I've played a fair amount of them behind the scenes, non-competitive, and whenever I do play with him, he tends to do really well. But then when you get to comp, he kind of like, he's almost getting pushed in the corner, just like, don't feed, just go even, be like relevant late game. So he's never, he's never really given that opportunity to really thrive. 
But at the same time, he's always kind of played for royalty, which again was knocked out yesterday by himself, Panther, which is kind of a story in itself that we'll touch on a bit later. But like, does he have the opportunity now to potentially pop off in this series? Because a new roster, nibble, different dynamic, different team, different players. So I'm not too sure what to expect from Panther. But I kind of, I kind of want to see if this is going to be his his series finally, like his final. I, I definitely think it's going to be a, a very good matchup. I mean, going up into Jetlust as well, it's no, uh, he's no stranger in the scene. Jetlust has always been quite solid for the side of ATK. He's been able to uh, assist in leading them to victories. And I think what what you've described is like two very pillared players. They both uh, do their job, what what needs to be done, and they get it uh, they get it done. Uh, then moving down to the jungle, looking at uh, we have not taking on Juicetron. That is his new name right now. That's a, that's an old uh, school match. Previously matchup. known as Neutron. Like these are both players who've been in the scene for a long time, and I'm sure they've played into each other a fair amount. So it's kind of a, again that clash of the titans almost. Like who topples who? Who's putting the work behind the scenes? Who's got the practice in since the last time they met? But uh, I mean, dude. Un unbiased caster, if you had to pick one of the two jungles, who's your favorite? I I personally think though Not has um he's he's more in shape, realistically. Like he's IRL been playing or like in game. It, oh, IRL and in game. Oh, yeah. I mean the it's man hasn't taken a break. Uh Juicetron, he's only recently returned to the scene. I think he's taken about a four to five year break. Ooh, interesting. Where he went into retirement and five lonely men pulled him out of retirement. Get him on the roster, so it's kind of a weird one. I would one. definitely say not not is probably more in shape, yeah. Five lonely men seem to be pretty good at pulling plays out of retirement. I mean they've got Red Raven off the bench, a man apparently playing from work. What's the story with that? <laughs> well, well 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 I mean the man's dedicated. We said uh, uh five lonely men approached him and they said we we need an AD carry. He had retired eight months ago and he said, Look, I've moved my computer to my office now. I work from my office, so that was the best place to put my computer. So he's like, But don't worry. I'll drive into the office. I'll play from the office. So why not? last night until half past 11, he was at his office. Today, he's at his office again, getting ready for some action-packed League of Legends. So uh, some dedication from his side. Mm, I mean, Red Raven, like you mentioned, he's kind of retired for at least, I mean, probably around eight months. Man stopped playing the game, kind of left on a peak of one, one of finals. I think he hit Masters on one of his accounts. And then he's like, guys, I'm done. This is me. I'm going to move on to other stuff. And the League of Legends, the drag that it is, pulling him back in. And Yoinking <laughs> says, you're not going anywhere, friend. Get back in here. So, I mean, eight months of a break. Do you feel like he's back on form? Or like what, what variation of Raven do we see in the situation? It's, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough question. Because, I mean, eight months of not playing, I mean, we, we definitely know that the dynamic of the game did a lot with uh, AD carries actually being relevant in the past two patches. The, the changes made to itemization, the change to champ bot lane. So I definitely think that the state of the game favors him, but uh, just being away from completely from League of Legends, it does him to Klax. He's been playing, or I mean, the whole of ATK, they've been playing through. So they definitely have experience and they're in good form and in good shape having that. Um, having I mean, ATK is kind of known as a team that doesn't really practice that much in the past. Like, they haven't really had to. Like, they've always been that, like, top dog to be dethroned. So I'm kind of curious as to whether they have been putting in the work. I'll take I'll take your word on that one. It'll definitely show in the series. So we'll see what they can do with that. But as well, like, champion pool-wise, I think it's a pretty good spot of the meta now with the new patch for Raven in particular. He's, like, one of the main affiliates players in the SA scene. And that champion being decent now with the update that came like in the last couple of weeks. So I'm curious to see whether that actually makes it through the pick and ban phase. I think it's definitely a, a champion to watch out for in this series if he does get it. Uh, there's, a good, there's a good chance he'll pick it up. I mean, it's also situational, so you don't want to just blind pick Aphilios because there's, there are counters to it. But if the moment's right and it's available, I definitely see that being one of the comfort picks. But it looks like we are going to be heading into the action now, into Champ Select to see what these players are bringing on today. Right, so jumping straight in with the Silas ban. So, I mean, predictions for your side. What do you what do you think doesn't get through here if you were drafting from the side? What do you I, Well, I mean, the Silas and Victor already taken away. I expected those to go. They're very strong picks from both sides. We saw Kiddo on the Silas yesterday into Royalty, and we've seen Slayer on the, Vic, the Victor as well. So that's good picks to take away. Um, 
I'm expecting to see some AD carry bands, maybe Caitlin as well, being a very strong pick at the moment. Um, and I know she's got priority, and then possibly even the Malkai being taken away. I mean, interesting one on that is that Malkai was kind of nerfed a little bit in the last pack. The AP Malkai not nearly as strong, but at the same time, you can still play him tank with success. So we'll have to see whether that is necessary to ban or not, as well as no signs of Yogi. So we don't really have that Malkai like main player as far as I've seen. But at the same time, like you mentioned, the Victor ban pretty good. Anything that really scales up, as we do know Slayer likes to play that mid lane. That's kind of don't really need the solo kills. Almost like dash 2.0 to an extent. Or zero. All right. And there's the affiliates that we just spoke about being taken away from Red Raven. Obviously, it's one of his best champions. It's one of the champions that actually got him to master TSI. It makes sense to be a band, but then also we didn't touch on it, but the Wukong band being taken away from not. Mm. I mean, that is that is the champion that uh, he is known for. I mean, he used to be nick nicknamed Arambe. So makes sense to ban the Wukong. And then last but not least, the Ziggs getting taken away for Slayer. So trying to get these control mages away from him. Yeah, so Wukong as well, actually a really, really good spot again. Uh, he, he was like S tier, but not a bit, and now he's kind of back up there, so it's understandable to go for that Wukong ban. Wouldn't be surprised if we see not like skyrocketing a solo queue the next couple of weeks. Unless though, first pick or first ban phase done and dusted. We have a Sejuani lock as well as the Maokai. Okay, so you were correct on that All one. right, so the Maokai I was expecting to go to the side of ATK. So I was sort of correct with the champion, just the teams not so yeah, much. Take away. Uh, but it looks like the Sejuani also gets picked up for ATK. I mean, we've seen ATK bring up this champion numerous times. It's a very big comfort pick or not. So uh, no surprise there. And then, yeah, the Caitlyn being picked up for the side of five lonely men as also expected. I'd be curious to see whether they pair a Lux support with the likes of like Caitlyn, super super strong bot lane at the moment, just super like aggro, gets kill pressure and basically prevents you from farming. So I'm curious to see whether that is the support or perhaps it's banned away. Unless though, do you think that Sejuani is going topple jungle? I 100% am going to put all my money on that is jungle. Every single time we've seen, or I've seen ATK pick up this champion, it's been for not. Ooh, that's Loves interesting. That could be a Sona top though. Oh, uh, there's, you a, there's... Sona top? So in the top is uh, something that's recently in the last patch come into solo queue, oh, yeah, and no. it seems to be the the counter into bruises going up uh, against the likes of Set, uh, being a nice counter pick there. But it also plays a nice flex pick for the side of ATK in case they no longer want to send the top. So they've got some wiggle room to work with Ooh, here. Senna locked in. So I kind of like this. They're almost hiding their picks to an extent. Um... So I don't know about the center top, that's a new one for me. At the same time, is they haven't really picked the top lane. We don't know where Malakai is going just yet, so that kind of would be a disrespect pick. But in this case, the flex are definitely possible. We could always have something really bizarre, like the Sejuani center bot lane with a bit of a fasting lane. So we'll have to wait for the second pick phase to really work out what the plan is. So, so far, I think ATK are doing pretty good at the mental chess game. I think the the drafts from both sides, I don't think anyone's shown too much. I mean, Karma, she's also known as a top laner, a mid laner. Mm. I, I would expect it to be in the bot lane on Tiltosaurus. But I mean, just with the flexibility of these champions, it's just both teams are not giving away a lot. They're trying to give away as little as possible, but secure the strong picks at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it kind of, it kind of sounds like bizarre, but I feel like Council Lake particularly is a huge huge on all aspect of the game like playing the game is one thing but this almost back and forth chess game of trying to outplay outsmart each other and that's exactly what these flex picks allow for for example the karma but i'm gonna take a guess and say the sona wasn't intentionally picked that or someone's just having a bit of tech issues so it looks like uh, there was a bit of a technical difficulty so the champ select will be made shortly again but it gives us some more time to break this down so initially we see a bit of the picks coming in sheepy what are your what are your thoughts initially seeing those champions so i really like karma i don't know what to expect from the sona i feel like sona is a very squishy champion has to be played in certain situations you kind of want to scale up and then late game you almost just empower the entire team becomes a really really like hard to deal with towards the later stages but into the likes of like a caitlin pick very risky because Caitlyn kind of wants to kill you early, and if Sona doesn't play it correctly, that is going to be a bleeding lane. I think it's, it's very interesting. Caitlyn being quite the lane bully, especially early on, she does have one of, she is the longest range ADC, and the only ADC that can match her at level one with the range is Aphilios, which we did see banned. 
So I'm expecting to see a lot of harassment in that bot lane. Uh, but it looks like uh, the side of ATK is taking a bit of sustain. So they'll have the heal from the Senna. If the Soda does go bot lane, they also have the heals from the Sona. So they'll be able to survive the laning phase uh, to take us to the mid game. Yeah, you're going to survive it, but you're living under your turret, uh, <laughs> not really having too much fun, I'll be honest. So I'm kind of curious. As well as like we touched on, Earlier, it tends to be a bit of a jungle, like, bot-centric playstyle. All right, kind it looks of... like we're going to be heading back into time select. There should be, um, looks like kind we of... should be seeing the same thing again. Bit of a visual bug just on the side of uh, five lonely men. Those champions will be locked in, so we'll see uh, quite a quick pick and ban phase for the initial, and I think as soon as we get to the second ban phase, it should slow down again. So Karma's nice in the sense that she can be placed in a solo lane, you can put a mid top for support as well as you kind of want to pair something that's super like aggro in the early stage with the Caitlyn bot lane, so Karma can, can definitely be an option. As for the side, yeah, there we go. So it's not going to be the Sona, it is in fact Varus, I think that was a bit of a DC, and I'm kind of I'm kind of happy that happened, I'm not going to lie, I don't <laughs> want to see the Sona for the first game. That was, a, that was definitely an interesting pickup, but then we should have quite a definitive there, a Varus Senna bot lane for the side of ATK. Um, it'll just be very interesting now to see what the side of five Donia men pick into that. Second ban phase, we did see this part with the Syndra and the Orn being taken away, and the Urgot going to be the final ban that five lonely men can take away from Urgot from mm. DK. So, yeah, Nas has always been very comfortable in that Urgot pick in the top side. But I like the respect ban, says, no, no, you shall not get the crab with like six legs. I want to go with six. As for the side of ATK, they're saying that is not going to be the karma mid. We're thinking it's going support potentially, so let's just ban out the Oriana. No shockwave allowed, as again, this is Kiddo playing mid for the side of Nibble, and in the past we do know he has liked that Oriana pick, but at the same time, a couple of interesting choices available as the volley locked in. Maybe we get a Lucian? This, this gives us a lot of clarity on the side of five lonely main each players will be going, so we can definitely say that Volley is going to be in the top lane in the jungle, and the Caitlyn in the bot lane. So now five lonely no, main no, have yes. saved the counter. We could have still karma support or mid, so they're leaving that last final pick. They probably just allow Kiddo to potentially get the counter matchup as more of the players are revealed. We do have now Scion locked in and looking to be a potential Ari or Talia hover. I, I would expect the the Ari over the Talia. I Ooh. don't think we've Ooh. seen they take the locks on the Talia, but now we have more options. Yeah. I'm thinking I think, Lux. Uh, we get, uh, do you think we get yeah. a Lux support and a Varus mid instead? I like the Lux lock in here because it basically denies the Caitlyn Lux potential for the final pick. And but like the common mid. But it's going to be most likely Kaisa mid if they do lock it in. Uh, we oh, do Annie. See, like, we're getting, we're getting treated as well. Like all Ezreal, these Ezreal, Maybe the Ezreal locked in mid. We saw this come out yesterday. Yes. To see, and uh, if we didn't see Ezreal mid, today it's the thing and uh, so, on kiddo it does work i don't know if it's just a comfort pick for him or if it's something that's actually becoming a bit more meta i haven't really seen it too much outside of this noble side but i mean again so kiddo is one of those players that tends to want to skill express in the sense that he wants to kind of show off and carry solo is the kind of champion you can do that on very good at keeping distance between you and your partner as well as a lot of damage output plus those cross map snipes and i I'm keen to see what he does with it. Do you remember how it turned out for the, the Nibble versus uh, Royalty series? The Ezreal pick? Uh, it was a dominating force. It was unstoppable. And it was um, that um, five lonely men were able to get victory. Right, so uh, we've, got, uh, yeah, we've got Champ Select. Done and dusted. The picks have been picked, the bands have been banned, the players are now loading in, fingers crossed no more technical issues, we didn't have that champ select DC. But again, it wouldn't be a South African esports series if we didn't have at least one technical breakdown in some fashion, whether it be the load shedding, or the somebody, one of the players' internet's cutting, it, it is what it is, we're just used to it at this point. But looking at the picks and bands purely off the draft themselves, expectations for the first game, do we have a win from the side of ATK, or is this going to be the nibble side of victory? I must say, I've always been a favor of the Sejuani pick. I find it to be a very controlling um, champion, especially in the early game. 
and as we go to mid game, she gets out. Uh, I think she can replace. However, Malkai picked pretty much same. He's got a very good lock up early uh, with the twisted advance. So I think it's 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 going to be a very jungle orientated game. It's going to be difficult to say. One lane we've got a, a Caitlyn and a Karma, which is very strong, especially early on. It's a lane bully lane. They've got the Senna and Varus though, so that could be something that can sustain through the lane and just get through the laning phase. And we've seen Varus on the Rift um, and quite a uh, really that champion. So mm. we've been showcased what that champion Klax, he's a very proficient ADC. He's been playing the game. The dinosaurs were still around. So that he knows what to do. So him on a champion like Varus, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that. I don't think the lane would be that tough. Despite uh, the Caitlyn, I think he's going to be able to hold his own and push through. Right. So again, Lux bought a lot of damage output potential. Was a really nice takeaway because they could have flexed or picked it up for Lux Caitlyn bot lane, which would have been a bit more difficult to deal with. At the same time, though, Karma is very, very strong. Like you mentioned, the early stages and being that bot centric mentality at the moment, like players want to play for bot lane for the carry means that there's going to be a lot of fighting, a lot of blood, and my prediction is going to be first blood bot lane. And I mean, I, I'm not too sure which side it's going to go, but that's going to be where the first blood is, if the scripts are correct. Uh, it is both junglers stop sides, so they work their way down, and absolutely agree with you. The first players in the bot lane, I'll, I'll give it 20 chance for mid lane, play, but I'm definitely expecting the bot lane with action and speed there. Uh, both lanes have the opti with the assistance from their jungler, and they both have very early game proactive junglers to be able to do this. So I think it's going to be a very interesting dynamic to see how these junglers set the pace of this game. And I definitely see, I expect to see a matching of the two junglers to make sure that they're in the right place at the right time to either counter gank or to set up ganks. So something else to consider, right, is this isn't online finals, so no IRL land buff or, or beef, if you will. Like no, no. You like, can't just uh, stand up in your seat and uh, start screaming at the player yeah, over the refuse the handshaking and whatnot. Screen <laughs> is going to be over the <laughs> no, no, Absolutely online, and I think it's it's been a very tough season just with load shedding and everything, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, but uh, a huge thank you to Metal State for making this happen. I mean, they've put together this league, uh, they put together the streams, they put together this fantastic production to be able to bring us this action. And I mean, the players have fought hard through the season as well to be able to get to this moment. So. I think just a huge thank you to everyone that's been able to get this sorted. And also to uh, the viewers at home, thank you to for your support. Uh, I, we also want to know what you think will happen in chat. So do you think that ATK is going to take game number one, or do you think that uh, Five Lonely Men is going to take it? Get those hashtag Five Lonely Men win or ATK win in the chat. And then also, um, Sheepy, thanks uh, for Hello. joining me on the desk today. I'm, I'm excited for this series with you uh, to the same, uh, bring the action to unpack it. It's not the same as being next to yeah, you, able to put the my arm around you, but um, I'm, I'm still excited. I'm, I'm keen for that energy to flow. I'm, I'm excited for that first blood. I'm excited for these teams to uh, just put on a show because I, I, I personally just looking at these rosters, looking at the matchups, this is quite a high experienced amount of players playing here. Right. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we will be making our way onto the rift. Got ATK on the blue side and five lonely men on the red side. All right, good luck to both sides. May the better team win. Again, it is a best of three. So the first team to two victories do take the series. And this is the final, so not really a place to be messing around. This is where you bring out the trump cards, what you've been kind of hiding up to this point. So I'm excited to see what we do get. And again, bot lane, it's gonna be the lane to watch as we have the cleanse, summoner heal, pick up for the bot for Nibble versus the likes of the barrier and summoner heal. I think it's absolutely, as you said, a do or die moment for both of these teams. They've battled it out. They're at the grand final now. They need to bring their A game. They need to pull out all the stops. There's no hiding your comps here. There's no hiding your tactics here. This is where all the hard work comes into play now, and these teams need to make it happen. I'm just happy everybody has items. Um, we've had... That is that is a good point to know. I mean, we've definitely seen yeah. games where uh, the pressure's on so much, people forget to shop. Uh, small mistakes that you would expect to be a norm, uh, they happen. But uh, both these teams, they've got their mind in the right place. 
And looks like it's going to be, as predicted, a topside start for both junglers. So that bot lane is where the action will be. So, like we mentioned, selling Telosaurus got items, a bit of nerves in one of the previous finals. So he's back at it again with Vengeance. Fingers crossed we do get a good performance as bot lane. Well, they're going to play uh, pretty aggressive as the magic Q does connect. So that's a one out of one. Telosaurus going to be zoning unique off of this wave early seeing if he can deny himself but there's no minions going down so that xp should not be an issue we're going to be seeing the level two coming out of these bot lanes now as the Ooh, front mid, melee though. minions fall mid already taken actually quite low by a kiddo otherwise known as luke jin heat up yeah, kid low if you will slayer chunk down like you mentioned so he is running a barrier no signs of teleport mid lane a bit of a cheeky ignite star from israel says i again I'm confident in this matchup. I want to solo carry the side of Nibble. I'm not here to take names. I'm here to get kills and put the team on my back. And that's exactly what he's going to try to do with that aggressive summoner as topside again. Penta, kind of my dark horse, if you will. The play that I'm in particular hoping pops off. So, uh, what do you think? Do you think this is going to be an AP volley or a tank volley? Um, I think the Doran's Ring is just the, the, for the start, it's for a little bit of perks sustain. I think we'll get probably like tanky AP, not entirely sure what the meta is for automization. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Nashes do, I know that the tank is definitely the safe option, but uh, the AP being the fun option. Uh, just putting out lots of damage that's not expected here, but junglers now, it looks like Sejuani making her way to the mid lane now. With that pressure that Israel is putting there, just going to try and alleviate some of it. Yeah, so again, no teleport means that he's going to be missing waves crashing into the turret, potential plate pickup, as we do have a Juicetron making his return to the Summoner's Rift in the form of killing the Skull Crab tree versus, I don't know, I want to say that's a, some sort of tree creature, I don't know what Skull is, but I'm pretty sure that's like killing your own kind. <laughs> All right, so Top Scuttle is going to be secured as well by the side of ATK. Malkai is going to have that information and uh, just going to reset you. All right, so bot lane, take a look again. Both Malkai's kind of chunked down low as the trap is connected for a bit of a cheeky headshot. So the reset does come through. They should show up and then reset themselves. And it's four minutes in, yet to see a kill. And something I say is time and time again is that first game in particular tends to be quite slow. Players almost feeling each other out, saying, Ooh, one out of two mantra keys. Okay, tilt. Emo Lab's not there. So, like I was saying, basically, first game, especially in a best of five, which this is not, tends to be quite slow. So, game two so, is where we see a lot of that, like, off the bat action. So, we mentioned that this bot lane now, as we see, it's going to be very much in favor of Red Raven and Tiltosaurus just playing lane bullies now. Um, so, we can see that uh, the side of ATK is taken quite low, but this, as I said, it's expected. They just need to play safe, not die, and arm up, and once this phase is over, it'll be a bit of a better time for them. Alright, so keep in mind the center scale is pretty crazy if he is able to get the stacks, the souls, or the pickups. And we can already see that we have not kind of hovering around in case they're needed. So generally, Red Raven and Tilt will have the shove and the pressure on this boss side, but the main priority is not getting picked off by not. Fun. So uh, Sejuani did clear the vision in that tri brush there. Doesn't look like he's in the position right now to repeat gank. He's uh, busy with his raptors. But uh, nonetheless, I still feel that this should be the bot lane uh, focused game. And I'd love to see the jungler setting up some plays there. All right, so but middle, I can see that CS gap due to... Uh, it's going to go with Kiddo. Not having a back release player forced to reset on an awkward wave. That's a bit of a back forth and both experience and kills his top lane, Panzer to Demons. Cancelling the knock up, turns the turret off, Ooh, lights like... down, but the flash away. Trying to find an angle for the solo kill, but doesn't really work out as not now here for the counter pop one available. He is behind Panther, he has no flash, he has no ult, he is a vulnerable bear. He's going to get the shield momentarily, but it's just delaying his death. And the first blood is going to be secured by ATK Jetlust. Able to secure that uh, kill there. Yeah, so I mean, dude, I think I think Penta got a little bit excited. He wanted to show off. He heard me hyping him up. He's like, let me get my <laughs> solo kill. Does not respect the jungle and not is there in the shadows to punish it. So first blood, top lane, ATK. I was completely wrong. 
we, we both were. We were expecting bot lane. We saw some action in the bot lane, a little bit of uh, low health individuals there. But at the end of the day, uh, top lane uh, did us the favor. Okay. Now. Looks like oh, no. he is going to go oh. onto the Lux. Ezreal ult comes Slither out. Slither of health! Onto Ezreal, one HP going to flash away. Juicetron now onto the Lux. Gonna Doesn't get the barrier damage. out. Shield comes in from the center. Healing comes up. Just one more auto shoot in. As Sejuani there, just in case. But it looks like that Juicetron was a dead tree. ATK have made their tribute to the right gods. In this case, actually, Neville mid lane Luke Jin feeds up or Kiddo. Not gonna be actually dying, apparently, as it does only result in one kill for the side of ATK. A blue 11.1 to 10.1, so a thousand gold lead seven minutes in as unique support. Walking up on center from bot lane, a bit of an interesting rotation, but it does end up working out. They do, they are able to scale the kill there and. Kiddo, I mean, he got gets away with one HP. You saw that final spark came in from Lux, and uh, you, you think that's Ezreal going down, but no, he's able to swivel his way out, and uh, they sacrifice the tree for that, and that's uh, ATK just uh, trying to accelerate their lead. Yep, got to plant a tree, save a life, you know. Pretty sure that's what works, or was it Fire Ward, save a life, something like that? Fire Ward, save a life is in the rift. In real life, we can plant a tree 100%. Cool. Alright, if ATK wins this, you've got a plant tree, Nibble wins it, I'll do it. That's the deal. Can I Absolutely, I, 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 can, I can take those odds. Cool. Either way, we're buying a tree. Alright, so back to mid lane again, the farm difference still quite uh, big. And bot lane, hello. Red Raven, chunk down. Level 6 is where the action does start, ultimate's now unlocked. Red Raven, there it is. Ace in the hole does receive the Q to the face though, summon a heal. Consumed and the reset's gonna be there. Apparently, Panzer finds himself a kill on the top side. He's back for vengeance as Jetlast trying to walk him down. Ooh, one more auto should do it. Oh, he gets doesn't it. look like. Oh, he's able to get the auto and he gets the kill. Right, so. My Lord. word, so the trade comes in. I was about to say, cool guys, don't look at explosions. And that explosion was the Scion passive, but apparently he they. He stretched did. so hard to reach that goal. Oh, that Scion's arm is just grabbing his shoulder to steal that victory. Dislocated. <laughs> Worked. But a nice one for one in the top lane. I think that's probably the most frustrating part about playing against Sauron. Even when you kill him, he's not dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we do have a bit of an AP rush from the likes of Penta, like you mentioned. But uh, game is going to be a bit more interesting now as Dragon Dance has started. I will choose Tron, unfortunately, not really able to contest in terms of vision. Not as well as Slayer having that priority. We do see that uh, the side of ATK is in position, but Malka yeah, making his way to the mid lane. Lux does have flash. Ultimate comes out from Ezreal, knocks him out. The Ezreal Q, the final spot comes in, followed by the Q, and Slayer able to turn that around yeah. and pick up the kill onto the Malka. Now we've got three members of ATK walking up onto this Ezreal. Sejuani going to flash forward, make sure the W connects, and is able to secure the kill on to Israel. Yeah, that was not the cleanest of Markai combos. I think in that case, you probably want to W root into Q ult. But it looks... So if, I think if he if he lands that Q, but while that's happening, we do see Enter Demon being taken down. So ATK being at multiple points on the map now, making sure they're securing objectives in other lanes. Bot lane hasn't been too hectic in terms of fights. But ATK said, okay, cool, we're not getting anything bot lane, we'll make sure stuff happens in the other lanes. Yeah, ATK are not here to mess around, they know this is the finals, and they don't have much wiggle room, so they're just going to try and look to take that 2 for 0. I don't know if I asked you earlier, but uh, expectations, do we get to the third game? I, looking at these rosters, I think it's a three game series. I, I want a three game series yeah. as well. I think it's definitely something that the viewers want at home, those on Twitch and those on Jinx TV. It will be something very exciting for them to just get all this extra League of Legends content. And I mean, two games is never, it's, it's, it's a bit too short in my opinion. Right, so, I, mean, I don't know what your opinion kind of like is. An interesting thought as well is the fact that now with Lurching and whatnot, especially being at stage six, we have a much smaller window of opportunity to play these games before it's almost guaranteed that a player won't be able to play the next bracket, like the next two hour window. So how does that impact the players looking at the clock constantly being like, guys, we gotta get the series done now, or we can have to reschedule, and in this case, I doubt that's gonna happen, so... I mean, that's that's never no, that's not an option in a exactly. I, I, I would I would assume that a lot of these players have made the, the necessary arrangements sure. in terms of um, backup powers or whatever, or maybe just change locations so that they're not 
affected by the load shedding. But I mean, it's like, uh, but I, I think it's definitely something that plays in the back of the mind. If they are yep. players that are like, okay, cool, I'm not going to have power at a certain time, so uh, we got to make sure either we we two owe this game, or uh, we got to bring in the subs. Yeah, if you want to play at your peak, you want to hit that flow state. You got to remove distraction and something like that. Something in the back of your mind might affect you in a negative fashion. So we'll have to. See what happens with the rest of the series as it looks like it's going to be a bit of a gold lead about two and a half thousand in favor of the side of blue there are several kills up but at the same time yet to really see a brick fall and both turrets still stand in with plates and two minutes left on the clock and uh just something we didn't mention but uh noble were able to secure the first dragon of the game so it looks like they were just able to see I an opportunity the in the top lane though we do see sun though flashing towards pentademon but the, it's going to be met by the flash from Volibear to get away and uh, a trade for flashes in the top lane. Right. While this happens though, Herald is getting dropped mid. This should be the first tower actually going down. Yeah, let's see what happens though. Red side TP looking to try to just get back to top side, so they're going to be scrapping that mid turret. So, I mean, top jet kind of wants his vengeance. He did end up trading back before, but it was a painter solo kill technically that was then like neutralized. So he wants that vengeance, he wants that 1v1, and Penta, if he didn't have that flash or if he didn't use it at that point, definitely it was on the table for the revenge solo. So. Not. Alright, so we see Sage has made her way down to the bot lane, maybe looking to make a play here. They've got a lot of chain CC available here with the Varus ult, with the Sage ult, so if they're able to find that opportunity, there's a lot that they can make happen though. Chains do connect though for the center stun, but uh, not going to be too much followed up by this. But Sage creeping now into the bot lane, is in the bush. We should see a trigger being pulled very soon. To the go Caitlyn, to the go Karma, because again, Raven sitting on the cleanse, has that get out of jail free card, but at the same time, Karma sitting on some of the heals, so let's see how it turns out as Slayer rotating down. So this is kind of giving off a bit of a, a bit of a warning saying, hey guys, we're in trouble, get out, get out. Red so it looks alerts. like they've suspected something, oh, no. they knew something wasn't right, but it, ATK making their way. We do see Caitlyn though being, Karma being the target and getting it locked up and just decimated by the side of ATK not taking not giving any opportunity for an escape though we do see the maokai okay, right. is coming out gonna just lock up the sejuani who's gonna take the sun for everyone right, four members of ATK, quite strong here lux final spot comes out doesn't really connect to the maokai but caitlin going to be able to sidestep that and four members of atk are going to walk out of the jungle of five lonely men right so i mean it was a pretty uh, sneaky attempt at the bot lane but at the same time it should have been somewhat predictable they got the tier one mid lane so they're gonna look to try and make a play somewhere else in the map lux was missing gets shown on the vision ward suddenly or even until it are in trouble they do get a bit of assistance bit of relief of pressure but at the same time unfortunately tilt will not be able to flash away from that said you want lock in place so again tier one turret bot lane now taken and atk looking to slowly chip by chip take away and reinforce that lead so the mythic has been picked up here by the volibear now as well as the sign sign's going to be stacking hp where volibear is going more the ap centric build so he's going to look for those fights but um Sion, he's a tank he's going to just walk out of it I don't huh. think there's that much kill pressure but from the side of Volibear. Maybe that's He's just going to keep stacking this HP. Well, you're wrong. You say he's a tank, but right games has other plans. Tanks now deal damage, and they're insanely tanky, because <laughs> well, why not? Right games, right, as top side. Again, now, objective Dragon. Ooh, it okay. looks like Penta taking really low. The Sion ult comes out. Penta Demon, though, going to get that shield. He's not going scared. to be autoing away. Does bring it back with the auto charges up the queue though to knock up Pentademon and it looks like that's going to be it for that trade but uh Pentademon just turning it on and saying okay you're gonna get me low but I can still fight back all right so essence completed for mid League Jin feet up has a bit of poke damage they're gonna try to get some cheeky trades gets that one for free as again well dragon's gonna be the objective to play for having that Maokai pick means sapling and brushes, creates a lot of vision and control, but at the same time, ATK being so far ahead in gold as well as kill pressure. This is kind of a bigger risk for the side of a nibble. Five already men as the Ooh, binding. You do see the binding land by Sage onto the Maokai. Maokai ult comes up, final spot onto the, the Maokai. Looks like he's going to be 
surviving a bit, but still the story is getting taken down by the center. Red Raven forced to run away, puts down a trap, and it looks like one more auto from the center is going to be able to get that kill. And while that's happening, though, Lux able to pick up Malka on the side, and three members of Five Lonely Men are dropping like flies and flies very quickly to the side of ATK. Yeah, for a four center not found as topside turret finally handed over Nibble, getting their first Nibble at the ATK uh, turrets, so. It wasn't an all for nothing as that's now going to be two drakes for the side of red versus multiple kills for the likes of ATK. So let's see how that just translates towards later stages, especially with that soul point, the potential window for Nibble to get back into the series. All right, so 6,000 gold being the difference between these two teams now. Very, uh, very difficult fight there for Nibble. ATK just showing their dominance. They're saying, if you want to take this break, you're going to die in your attempt. And uh, they just show uh, Nibble that they're not someone to be reckoned with. Yeah, you know what they say, you're just going to get the biscuits, and that's quite the expression for the side of Nibble. As now Rift Out Shelly starting up a reset, not going back because of blue. So again, Rift Out, very volatile objective. Like the fight itself might be more worthwhile than the objective. And with how the previous fight went, ATK are in a really good spot, so I'll be surprised if we do have a Nibble Rift attempt. It looks like ATK has control over this area. They've cleared out the vision from the side of Nibble. Just one ward remaining in that Dragon Pit. But while we see this happening, though, we do um. see Nibble setting up something in the bot lane. But Slayer's uh, no fool here. He's going to back away. Does put out the binding to check the bush. This is a great map also for has Malkai. the backup of the center. And I'm glad to see that it is the tank, Malkai. So we're not getting rid of that AP nerfed variation, which is good. Who reads the patches? I like it, I like it. Yes. But while, while this is happening here, we see that um, ATK is just securing this Herald. It's going to be uncontested. And Five Bernie Men's attempt to uh, do anything in the bot lane is just not possible. Yeah, they try to make it a play and have on bot side, but uh, Slayer having none of it is mid tier one the objective. But again, ATK have such strong trigger pull. Lens up to the hole. There's Pens going to be turning off the mid lane time. Oh, we see die. Ulting in. Kite, no, the Penta finds himself the cheeky solo, does end up trading back over, but he's basically giving some more breathing room for the likes of ATK, a rest in peace with Raven, flash up, but not used. Well, but while we see that happen, we do see Ezreal get onto oh. the back line moments before oh. he dies, but he's going to flash out, met with a flash oh, yeah. from the side, no. one more water, but he's going to get over the wall with the uh, arcane shift, but it's just a moment before Not goes on a rampage, taking down the Ezreal. It was APM going through the roof. The man's heart was racing, trying to predict the Lux positioning. Does not unfortunately work out for him in that case, as it's a bit of a 3v1 revenge of the previous allies, seeing as ATK used to be basically Kiddo's old roster, so it must have been fun. ATK just showcasing their strength now in this last fight. Nibble able to secure two kills, but ATK just turning it around straight away and saying, you, you'll pick up these two kills, but uh, that's all you're getting, and we're going to take a lot of you down at the same time. Right, so we've got two items now completed for Ezreal, so he's going to be hitting like a truck. He's got the Essence plus completed, completed Mirror Mana. Yet to really get the CDR boots, but we should start seeing Kiddo being a little more relevant. He tried last fight, just didn't have the edge. Trying to find that window of opportunity. We had him playing Cassiopeia last night, after he popped off, got super fed in the early stage. Stages. In this case, there was almost a window for him to snowball in the early stages, but ATK and especially not had other plans. So let's see whether he's able to basically get some form of lead and try run with it. But the later the game goes, the tougher it's going to get for Nibble, it seems, as ATK just getting win after win after win in these team fights. I think at, at the very least, uh, if Nibble want to uh, still stand a chance in this map, they need to slow it down tremendously. Just take it easy. You don't need to be looking for fights now. You've got scaling champions. I mean, the Caitlyn, we need three items on her. The Israel, the more items, Kinda the better. The we'll definitely see the, the strengths coming in round about the three, four item mark. Right, so Shelly dropped. And, uh, Shelly dropped top, yes. Able to secure this tower. Mm, I wonder no. if we'll see the second charge coming in. We had the same thing yesterday. The most unsatisfying Rift Hill charge. Do they get the second charge off as the Nash angle of the distraction, Shelly? See if it works out. All right, so ATK translating this Herald drop into the Baron. Going to be the first Baron of the game. No idea. To spawn. And there, there's no contestant coming in here. Even if uh, Double wanted to do something here, it's it's too late. I don't even think they've realized it. 
Looks like they'll the probably though. trade it for Baron, Entry. but uh, ATK should make their way down to the Drake pit now to uh, look at that next objective. So again, Nibble's kind of playing for that uh, soul point win condition almost. They're playing very prioritized on like flipping as long as they get the guarantee of the dragon. So that's going to be in our third soul point for the next one. But at the same time, ATK is snowballing so hard. I don't know if they get that window of opportunity to really slow the game to the point where they are able to get the soul and use it. So again, ATK is every... knocking on the door here of their base, yeah. taking down, just walking in, taking down the inhibitor. Do they, do they look for an engine? Uh, are they trying to find the I mean, we've got Ezreal sitting in the bot there. We see that Sejuani has engaged engage. onto the Malkai. The Malkai, though, going Next to be able to turrets. get away. While this is happening, we do see the towers. First tower going oh, no. very low. Ultasaurus yes. able to lock up Jetlust, but Jetlust is so tanky, he's just going to be able to walk it off. Oh, okay, we do see so that ATK starting to retreat a bit here, but it looks like they are still able to kind of sussing each other through. out. They, want to they go might look the to go for the Enger, that next oh, tower is going no. down. Ezreal only going to start the back now with no towers left. Only one, two members defending from the side of Nibble. ATK is just looking to Enger, the next is going low. And that is going to be game one going over to ATK, where they just say, okay guys, we go mid, we end, and they take the victory. Going up in the series 1-0. So I... Really like the back and forth that we had from ATK towards the end of that last fight. We had a bit of a base race with Ezreal sneaking towards bot side and the side of Nibble trying to slow them down as best they could. But again, ATK kind of backing off, reassessing the situation. Can we end here or do we reset? Because if you play with it a little bit too much, Ezreal gets your nexus. And in this case, slow, calm, collected, ATK were able to pick the right pick, got the right fight, got the right snowball, and were able to end with Ezreal not even able to touch back at base. I think Ezreal being the biggest threat that uh, Nubble had at that point in time where the rest of the champions still scaling, Ezreal's hit the two items. He's the only one that can actually defend against um, ATK. Yep. I mean, Malkai is going to be able to tank a bit of damage. Arm is going to give some shields. Caitlyn's going to get some traps. Uh, but the damage isn't there to be able to defend that level of a siege. And when you've got five barrened up fed members of ATK with a huge minion wave pushing down the mid lane, they're not going to stop if they don't need to. They, went they for can the end the game. They can end the game. And that's exactly what they did. There was no threat of Ezreal there, and they took what's theirs. They said, like, hey, we're ending. We're making this quick. With that situation, ATK in such a good spot in terms of goal and outcome, that probably was Nimble's best bet at trying to sneak a win. Like, almost... I uh, hope they misplay off that play. They're able to potentially get a pick and stop backs, and then Ezreal finishes the base, as opposed to trying to take that straight up 5v5, which you're almost guaranteed to lose, despite Ezreal kind of getting those items towards, like, that three-item pass spike. So in that case, I respect the attempt. Maybe different day, different flip of the coin. You could have snuck that cheeky win. But again, a best of three situation. It's super high risk to take it. It's not a best of five. You don't have that, like, longer window of opportunity to bring it back. So now you're on that final life. Well, this instantly puts ATK now on match point. They are one game away from being season four champions, four-time winners. Five lonely men, they need to dig deep now if they want to bring this back and uh, flip, the, flip the narrative here. But um, game two, they need to uh, go in with a nice reset, say, okay, cool guys, this is what we did wrong. Maybe switch up a few things. What do you, what do you think would be going through the heads of these players now, Sheepy? I mean, if it was royalty, I would most definitely believe in the reverse sweep because that's kind of a known or what they're known for. But at the same time, they were able to defeat royalty. So perhaps that curse is not handed over to this finals that they're able to bring it back. But Team Mental, like we said before, it's kind of all players who have been in the situation before. They've all been in finals. There's no new players on the block playing in these two sides. So like the mental aspect should be good as well as you have that at home buff. There's no like nerves from being IRL and LAN. So you're kind of chilling, you're at your PC, you've got your players in your ears, you've got your cats on the one side, food on the other side, so you're feeling pretty comfy. Just reset the mantle, walk it off, get some coffee, get some water, whatever you got to do. You've got that small window of opportunity now to take that break and almost treat it like it's the first game of the series again. No, absolutely. As you said, they've got this time just to relax. Both teams, I mean, ATK, they, their emotions are probably very good now. They're in a very comfortable spot now. They'll grab a glass of water, they'll relax, but they'll say, okay, cool, guys, we're on match point. We just got to do what we did in game number one, uh, do it our way, play our game. And I mean, we've seen them do it time and time again. So this is nothing new for them. And uh, with with a simple rinse and repeat, ATK should be able to take this series now in a convincing 2-0 if they bring what uh, they brought in game number one. 
So unbiased casters curse is this game of the third game. I'm asking again, Hard Rock. I've been nibble Hard Rock. What I are your would predictions? love. I would love a game three. I think uh, just just for the content and uh, to see these players going for it. A game three is still um, something I would love. Okay, so the dream is not dead think, yet. It still flies. As, the dream is alive. I think uh, the people at home they want three games. They want to see some good quality League of Legends. I definitely think Nibble's now going to go back to the, the drawing board and say, cool, this worked for us, this didn't work for us. Maybe change things up a bit. Uh, maybe look at putting Kiddo on more of a hyper carry in the mid lane. Maybe expect to see something like a Yasuo or Yon. That would be something quite interesting to see, just something completely to change the dynamic. And yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think they, they need to just look at what can work for them. Uh, but yeah, I think... Uh, Without further ado, we're going to take a quick inter intermission, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in about 10 minutes to bring you the action from game number two. We'll see you then.